So Joseph has had a dream. And Joseph has two dreams. And he's now standing before the Pharaoh of Egypt, the most powerful man in the land. And he says, I've had two dreams. Do you understand that God moves in dreams? Do you know God has dreams for you? They're just not called dreams. They can't be called dreams because he never, sleep, never sleeps nor slumbers. So he can't dream. So the word says that he has a will for us. Thy will be done, not my will, but thy will be done. Jeremiah says, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you. And he's speaking for God and prophesying there. So God has dreams for you. They're just called thoughts and plans or his will. But if he never sleep, slumbers or sleeps, he can't dream. And so today I want to tell you God has a dream for you. It's just used by a different name technically. Say with me, God has thoughts and plans for me. That's interesting to me. That the God of creation would have a thought and plan for Stephen. Yes. Who am I, Lord? That God would have a thought and plan for you. That literally God has a dream for Stephen. God has a dream for you. And one of the greatest things we will ever do is come into an understanding of that dream. Come into an understanding of what God has for our lives. Guys, if we got that ready for the word I want to read today out of Job. Because I want to address some of the issues of where we're at in the earth and where we're at in the world, where we're at in the nation. It seems like there's a lot of confusion right now. <laughs> a lot of bewilderment. And Job talks about an issue like this. And he discusses this. And we need to think about where Job was at. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It was written before Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. How do you deal with a God with no Bible? You ever thought about that? One of the things I love about the Bible is it tells me who God is and who I am and how to deal with every situation of life. But Job is now dealing in a situation, he has no Bible, he has no Pentateuch, but yet he's having to deal with the very God of creation. Each and every one of us will eventually deal with the God of creation. And sometimes we deal with God in the vicissitudes of life is where God really gets our attention. Anybody ever understood that when you're going through a hard time, generally God, you have God's attention and he has your attention. That God works in vicissitudes. God works in famine. And Job says, behold, I go forward, but he's not there. He said, and I go backward, but I cannot perceive him. Anybody ever been there? Yeah. Anybody in this room ever been there? I go forward, he's not there. I go backward, I can't, I can't figure out where God is right now. Yeah. Now, I want you to get a hold of this. On the left hand... Where he doth work. Everybody say, where he doth work. Where, where he, he doth work. He says, so on the left hand, be where he doth work, I can't behold him there. I didn't know God had a left hand, did you? I just, I just read it to you right there. God has a left hand. I'm going to talk about that today. And I praise God that he does. He says, but I cannot behold him there. He says, he hideth himself on the right hand. That I cannot see him. And then it goes on to say. But he knoweth the way that I take. Can I tell you today. God knows where you are at. Amen. Can I assure you today. God knows where you are. I want to assure you today. God knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He knows what you're dealing with. And Job says something at the very end there. He says, and he knows the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. Can you say amen? amen? So if I go forward, sometimes I can't see him. If I go backward, sometimes I can't perceive it. Sometimes I don't know where God is, but he knows where I am. And when this is over, I'm going to come out of this okay. Amen. That's good news. But he knoweth the way that he knows where I am. I'm not lost. And when he hath tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. That's an amen right there. 
God says, I have thoughts and plans for you. I have dreams for you myself. And so sometimes we cannot see God going forward, can't see God when we go backwards. I know we can all relate to that. If you look at 2020, it's kind of just unbelievable what took place in 2020 to me in this country. I saw things get put in fast forward motion of things that I thought I would, I never believed I would see in America. And so I'm crying out, Lord, where are you? Lord, where are you? He says, on the left hand where he doth work, but I can't behold him. On the left hand where he doth work. Oh, I praise God for this scripture. I praise God for this hidden gem in God's word. And I'm going to explain it to you at the end of this, of why this is so important. Of how powerful our God is. I know he's doing something over there on the left hand, but I, I don't know what it is. Have you ever sensed in your spirit that God is up to something, but you don't know what it is, but you know he's up to something? Yes. Am I the only one? You know God's up to something. I'm not sure what it is. I can't see it. I can't perceive it, but I know he's up to something good. Yes. Am I the only one in the room that ever experienced that? I know he's up to something. I can't behold it. He's doing something over there, but it's on, my it's on his left. I can't see it. But I'm not resting on what I know. I'm resting on what he knows. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I can't see what he's doing on the right. In fact, what he's doing on the right, sometimes he hides it from me. Have you ever got frustrated with God because sometimes he hides things from you? There were times your children got frustrated with you because you hid things from them. And why did you hide things from them? To protect them. I'm going to tell you, I praise God, sometimes he keeps us from destroying our own future. He has to hide things from us. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray that honestly. Listen, listen to these words. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Lead me not into temptation. Do you know what the real interpretation of lead me not into temptation is? Keep me from hurting myself. And sometimes God will hide things from you to keep you from hurting yourself. That's why your parents hid the car keys from you when you were 14 because they knew you would try to get them in the middle of the night and drive out in town. Why did they hide those keys? Am I the only one that grew up in a small town where you could pretty much drive anywhere you want anytime you wanted? My dad had a rule, just stay on the back roads. So I don't know what God's doing on the left. I don't know what he's doing on the right. He's hidden it from me. But I know he's working all things together for good. And I can rest and set myself and anchor myself in that place that God is working everything together for good in my life today. Yes. How many can rest and just anchor yourself there today? No matter what you're facing, God is working everything together for good. Yes. I praise God that God is working everything together for good in America. God's working everything together for good in your marriage, in your children's lives, in your marriage, in your job, in your finances. God is working everything together for good. Yes. That's a wonderful place to rest. Yes. So, Pastor, what is God doing exactly in America right, right now? I don't know, but I know he's up to good. Amen. I know he's up to good. Amen. Can't see it, can't even perceive it sometimes, but I know he's up to good. I know he's working all things together. I can't see it. I can't explain it. Can't even understand it. I don't always like it. Can I be honest with you? I don't always like it. But I know it's going to end up good. And that is how we have to walk into 2021. We may not like it, but we need to know God is up to something good. We can't explain it. We can't perceive it. But I'm telling you, God is up to something good. God is up to something good in this country, in your life, in your marriage, in your children's life, in the church. God is up to something good. And that's how we have to go into 2021. I believe that he's up to something good. I'm declaring he's up to something good. We just need to get in agreement with God. So many times in life we wonder, Lord, where are you? Anybody ever been fired? I, yeah, there's a few of us in here. Been fired? The reality is you need to go back and tell your boss, thank you. I went back, told my boss, this is what I told him. I said, I'm too smart to work for you. 
You need to go tell your ex-husband, now I found what a real good man is. You need to tell your old girlfriend, I'm glad you blew me off. I got God in his sakes, I thank God for that. Because as a believer, I know God is working. And as we look at this time, Joseph is walking in the favor of God in the middle of a famine. Now hold it. There is a famine, and this is unbelievable. Brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you God works in famine. I'm telling to you, God works in famine. And God has a man ready for the hour, a man of faith and power, and we need to understand what's going on. Joseph comes into this situation. Do you understand if there were no famine coming, Joseph would have remained in jail? Do you understand that? It is the famine that brought Joseph out of jail. It is the dream that Pharaoh had about what was coming that brought Joseph out of jail. Brothers and sisters, sometimes we need to praise God for the situation that we are in currently because it is a setup for God to do a move up and for God to do a bust up and get us out of the place we're going. The famine that came in Egypt and all the known world at the time was to get Joseph out of jail and put him in the position God had for him. Thank God for the famine. My goodness, the famine is why we have a nation of Israel on the face of the earth today, brothers and sisters. The favor of God does not mean you will never have vicissitude or problems. The favor of God does not mean that your knee won't hurt. The favor of God does not mean that you'll have money in your bank account every minute of the day. The, bank, the favor of God, brothers and sisters, is this, of understanding that no matter what I'm going through, God will be with me in it. That's the favor of God. So Joseph is walking in favor with God, and man, he's now been made the governor of Egypt. And the catastrophe is a famine. In this famine, God is going to do something amazing. He's going to reunite a family to create a nation. Woo! He's going to reunite a family to create a nation that we're going to get a guy named Moses, and we're going to get a guy named David, and we're going to get a guy named Solomon, and we're going to get a guy named Jesus Christ. That's what came out of this famine. That's what came out of this famine. I promise you that. Say there's favor in the famine. And the famine is in the favor. And only our God could be famine in a favor and favor in a famine. Only our God can operate at this level. My goodness. Sometimes the fullness or power of your anointing is manifest in a catastrophe or a famine. You will learn more about yourself in a famine than you ever will at a feast. I promise you that. Peter learned that the hard way. The reality is many times when God blesses us with a job, do you realize that eventually every job becomes a job? Yeah. How many have ever realized that you were so happy to get a job one day? Yeah. And I'm looking right at you, Scott. And when you got that job, <laughs> it was so amazing. It was so wonderful. And we look at the story of Joseph and, and we think it's a fairy tale. But when Joseph got promoted in Egypt, Joseph got a job. A full-time job. And have you ever worked with a place that you went home and you told your wife, I work with idiots. I work with... Joseph got a job. And here's what Joseph did. He said, I got a job and now I'm going to honor Pharaoh in what God has given me to do. And I'm going to honor Pharaoh even though he's not a believer. Even though he's not a believer, I'm going to honor my boss and I'm going to go to work and I'm going to do a good job for him. I'm going to honor him and God has put favor on me so that I can take the favor of God and bless him in the place that he has put me. Do you understand Christians ought to be the best employees there are in any job? Christians ought to be the best employees because we need to do it as unto the Lord, not unto man. Pharaoh was a pagan. And I'm sure there were times that Joseph went home and said, Babe, you're not going to believe what he said today. My goodness, my goodness, my goodness. And so we relegate this story to a little fairy tale. And we don't realize there's a reality to what Joseph had to do when he got promoted. Everybody say work. work. Everybody say work. work. The man went to work. And I bet it was probably seven days a week. If you've ever worked seven days a week, you know what it'll do to you. And it'll tax you. And it'll try you. 
And we don't realize this is a real story of God blessing somebody, but the blessing put him to work. I can tell you that word just excites every one of you in here. God gave him an unbelievable job, but now the job, now, now it's work. Now it's process. So the story of Joseph, it, it makes us forget the separation that he had with his father. The story is so glorious and so profound and it's, it's so intriguing of all the things that he goes through. And one day, he's the governor of Egypt. But I don't care what you ascend to, there's always something in your life that you're going to need God to work on. I don't care how famous you get, how much money you get, there's going to always be something in your life where you're going to need a mighty God to do a mighty miracle. God is going to use this famine to restore Jacob's family. You know, maybe we just need to start thanking God for the circumstances, circumstances we are in right now. For the circumstances he is going to use to restore what the palmer worm, the canker worm, and the caterpillar have stolen and eaten and taken from you. And understand, the circumstance I am in right now, God is using. And he's going to use this, and he's going to bring this into fruition, and God is going to get glory out of this thing. One of the things we understand about Joseph is there's no cussing his circumstance. There's not one recorded word of Joseph ever cussing his circumstance. Because Joseph understood, and I don't know how he understood this, but when you cuss your circumstance, you begin to curse your future. And Joseph never said a bad word or wrong word about any situation. Show it to me where he did. But I can tell you, you say, well, pastor, where is scripture for that? Well, you just turn to 1 Corinthians 10 and you read it down there, 11 through 15, and you'll find that God told Israel... After 40 years of murmuring and complaining, I had enough of you. He said, that's what broke my back. That's what broke my will. You understand, cussing your circumstance is cursing your future. And Joseph has come into this amazing place of favor with God and man. But he's not whole and he does not know it, but his father is still alive. The problem is they're starving. And the only people that are surviving, the only people that are doing well are the people in Egypt. And it is because of the blessing and the anointing God has placed upon Joseph. Can I tell you something? You, anybody ever worked in the corporate world where it's very competitive? And you got people cutting each other's throats and you got people lying and backstabbing. Anybody ever work in a situation like that? And, and the, the best way to get ahead was kiss the boss or whatever you had to do. And uh, you just had to do what you had to do to get ahead. And if you couldn't do that, which I, I, if you raise a certain way, you cannot do that. And Joseph was in the middle of this world. Can I ask you something? Do you think that every person there in Pharaoh's court just thought Joseph was the greatest thing since sliced bread? How many think that every person in there said, oh my goodness, we love this Semite come down here. In fact, wasn't he in jail? Do you know what he did time for? He, 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 he tried to rape Potiphar's wife. Do you know what he did? And now this joker is second in command? I've been, try, I've been busting my hump here for 10 years and I thought I was going to get the job. And now he gets it to this Semite from... Hanan? We, we, this is not a fairy tale. This is a reality. And I'm trying to get you to understand the reality of sometimes we just have to stick to it. We have to work through it. We have to trust God and understand not every day is a Friday. Not every day is fun. Not every day is perfect. There are days you just got to fight through it and get through the end of the day. That's why God gives us a home to go to. I imagine there's days Joseph went home and told his wife, honey, you ain't going to believe today. But when the favor of God is on you, it's an amazing thing. See, the reality is when you have the favor of God, it can even get you through a famine that would destroy other people. The favor of God can get you through things that will literally destroy other people. And I praise God for favor because favor has gotten me through things that I've watched it destroy other people. And so now we see this amazing thing. I want to share one of the greatest things God has ever shown me about life and living. How many know that the Bible says God has mysteries and secrets? He's the all-wise, all-knowing God. All-seeing, omnipotent, omniscient. So God would have wisdom that would absolutely 
be mind-boggling in relation to how we live on this earth. Don't you think God would have a plan of how to live on this earth? Yeah. Some secrets that he, he wouldn't tell the enemy? I want to share something with you that I don't know if I've ever shared this in ministry from the pulpit. But it's a phenomena. And it's the way God works in the earth. And there is a scripture in Galatians that explains this process completely and wholly. You see, when Joseph began working on Pharaoh's dream, when Joseph began working on Pharaoh's dream, God began to work on Joseph's dream. Yeah. Woo! <laughs> He's a right hand and a left hand God. Woo! So when Joseph went to work on his boss's dream, God said, I'm going to work on your dream, Joseph. Yeah. The best thing you can ever do is go to work and treat your boss right, the place right, the company right, and you go to work on their dream and watch what God does for your dream. Yeah. You need to understand this is a reality. Yeah. This is a phenomena and a secret of God. Yes, Let's see. For a man, hmm, for a man shall reap. Something, I, I read something about reaping somewhere. I, maybe I'll find it in the scripture later on. I think it starts with God won't be mocked. But if you want the blessing and the anointing of God, if you are believing and standing for something, I want to start working on somebody else's problem and see what God does for yours. Amen. This is a phenomenon. This is a secret of God. Anybody know that biblical phrase that God, it describes God as a wheel within a wheel? Ezekiel, yes. And here we see God working in a dream within a dream. But in, in the understanding of life, God, what, what do I do when I need your answer? What do I do when I need a breakthrough? I'm going to go to work on somebody else's problem. If you need healing, start praying for somebody that needs healed. You need a better marriage, start praying for somebody else's marriage. You need a better marriage, start praying for your spouse. Yes. Not yourself. Pray, start praying for your spouse. And here we have God operating in a dream within a dream or a will within a will. Here's what I'm here to tell you. God has a right hand for power and his left hand is for purpose and process. God can do two things at once. That's why he's a wheel within a wheel and he's a dream within a dream. God can work in your heart and your son's heart at the same time. Hallelujah. God can work in your life and her life and your marriage at the same time. God can work in this church and in America at the same time. He's a two-handed God. His left hand, I don't know what he's doing, but he's up to something good. His right hand is for power. His left hand is for purpose and process. The power of God's right hand raised Joseph up in Egypt. The purpose and process of God's left hand was working with his daddy and his brothers. Woo! They're messed up. They are really goofed up. I still can't believe Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. I ought to kick Judah out. Do you, know, you all know what he did. You, you know the story. My goodness. Wow. The second Joseph went to work on Pharaoh's dream, God went to work on Joseph's dream. This is where I want to get today. This is where I want to get. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do we look on one another? I've heard that there is grain or corn in Egypt. Go down there and buy some so that we may live and not die. And God is using a famine to restore a family. God is using a famine to restore a family. Because you've got to understand, when this family got back together... Joseph better have a right understanding and a right mind. And let me tell you something. Everything Joseph went through, the pit, Potiphar's house, the prison, and in the palace, made sure that when he got power, he would not abuse it. Because if he had not been anointed with that understanding, we might not have had the lineage of Jesus Christ on the earth today. In fact, I remember after Jacob died, they had a meet, the brothers had a meeting. <laughs> And now that daddy's dead, what's he going to do to us? That explained who they are to you? After he had done everything he had for them? So the brothers show up and, and oh my goodness, they bow down and fall down before Joseph. 
Whew. Hallelujah. God's working out my dream. Because I'm working out Pharaoh's dream. If you need something and you need God to do something, I'm telling you, start working on somebody else's dream. Start working in somebody else's life. If you want God to work in your family, work in his family. Right. You, go. you want God to work in your business, work in his business. Right, that's right. You want God to bless your wallet, you bless him. God says, I am God, I won't be mocked in this. I will not be mocked. Say, God will not be mocked. God will not be mocked. Joseph understood this. Can you imagine that scene where Joseph is there? He's selling the grain. He's selling the corn. He's large and in charge. He's got military around. He's got guards. He got... And he looks down and sees his brothers there. They have no idea who he is, and he bows down. They bow down. And the Bible says he couldn't contain himself. There's a blessing in God. There's times that God is so gracious and so merciful you cannot handle his grace. I, anybody ever seen what I'm talking about? God was so merciful and so gracious you, can't, you couldn't even stand hardly. And they come and they bow down. It's amazing what hunger will make you do. Hunger can bring you to your knees. It can make you say, I'm sorry. Hunger can change your attitude. Hunger and a famine may make you break lay prostrate on the floor before a living God. Hum, 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 being, being hungry may make you humble enough to see hunger as something that breaks you before God. Hunger is something that might bring you before God and tell him the truth. You know, I ain't been right. You know, I haven't been right. So most people think that God is right-handed, and we talk about God. If you look at the Bible up, you'll find out that it literally talks about the strong right arm of Christ, and the right arm of God really is Jesus Christ. But the right hand and left hand, God, people, people think that God is right-handed. I got news for you. Your God's ambidextrous. He can work with both hands. He can work with both hands. Because if you're right-handed, you use this side of the brain. If you're left-handed, you use this side of the brain. And my God is completely functional and capable. He uses his whole brain and both of his hands to work in our lives. He doesn't have a right brain, left brain problem. We do, but he does not. Amen. And that's why God can do two things at once and work in a situation. You cannot see it. You might perceive it. You might not understand it. But you know he's working. And what the thing is, amazing thing about me is, is while God's working in you, he's working in her. Yes. That's right. While God is working in me, he's working in my son. I thank God he's ambidextrous. He had to deal with me about my ego. He had to deal with me about my... Anybody in this room ever have God deal with you about your ego? Or am I the only, only one in this room that's going to be honest before God? God has no weakness. And Job is explaining it, what we just read. He said, I may not understand it and I may perceive it, but he said, I know you're working on the left hand. He said, you're hiding from me what you're doing on the right hand. That's for your protection, Job. But I'm here to tell you today, God is working on your behalf. Amen. You may not see it. You may not understand it. You may not perceive it. But I'm going to declare in 2021, you're going to see God do mighty and amazing things. Amen. But I'm going to give you a secret. You get busy working on somebody else's dream so God can get busy working on your dream. Get busy. Well, they're not Christians. Neither was Pharaoh. He was a pagan. Neither was Pharaoh. In fact, if you'll read Genesis all the way to the end of 52, you will not believe what Joseph did for Pharaoh. Do you understand that Joseph had made enough money by the time of the end of the first seven years of the years of plenty? Joseph could have skipped out of town, had as much money as Croesus, gone to the French Riviera, and retired. It's true. It's true. But he made a commitment. I'll interpret the dream, then I'll work out the dream. I'll interpret the dream, then I'll work it out. I'm going to make sure the dream God gave you comes to fruition. I'm going to stay through the seven lean years. Woo! I'm going to stay in this marriage even though it's lean. I'm going to stay in this job even though it's tough. I'm going to stay in the situation even though it's difficult. Because I know God has something good. Say God's ambidextrous. Your God can work two different places at one time. While you're sitting here in church, he's working on your kids there at home watching whatever they're watching. See, the right hand of God, therefore, is referenced in both place and proximity to God the Father in a position of power above all other powers. 
Jesus the Messiah exists at the right hand of God the, power, God the Father today, perfectly reigning with God the Father and God the Spirit, so we forget about the left hand of God. But do you know the Bible tells us that the angels of God are all around the throne? They're on the right hand of the throne. They're on the left hand of the throne. They're, all, they're not just on the right hand side of the throne. The angels of God are all around the throne. Can you say amen? amen. So the angels are over on the left hand side of the throne too. Oh, thank you for giving angels charge over us, Lord. Wow. See, God by his right hand held Joseph in the pit. It held Joseph in Potiphar's house. It held him in the prison. It held him in the palace. And then it held him when he had power. But the left hand of God was working with those jokers up in Canaan. They were messed up, greased up bunch of jokers. They were. They were horrible men. And the only person that ever had truly loved Joseph, because his mother had passed away in childbirth to Benjamin. She was gone. Billa had become his mother. She was Rachel's maid. And the only person that had ever loved him, his father, that he knew on earth. He didn't know whether he was dead or alive. And Jacob knew Joseph was dead. Hmm. We see the right hand of God in every step of Joseph's life. Favor of God is like cream. It will always bring you to the top. It will always, doesn't mean you won't have struggles, but favor of God is like cream. And we see that the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. Found the hand of the Lord is on David. So let me explain the left hand of God. Can I explain how the left hand of God works so you'll understand it clearly? There's a verse that absolutely explains this. All things work together for good. That's process and purpose. Say God's working in process, God's working in process. And, purpose and purpose in my problem. In my problem. No, say it like you really mean it. Declare it today. God's working in purpose and process on my problem today. The right hand is for power, but the left hand he uses for process and purpose. Oh, I praise God. He can, he can switch hit. He can bat right. He can bat left. My God's a switch hitter. You'll never understand favor until you've had famine. In the evidence of favor, you will ever have a blessing that made no sense. Anybody in this room ever had a blessing that just came out of nowhere? Made no sense whatsoever. You didn't earn it. You didn't deserve it. You couldn't believe it. Say with me, that's a favor of God. That's the power of God. But God said, I want to get you in purpose and process so that you begin to produce and build favor in your life because you're living by the principles of God. God wants you to begin to produce favor in your life. The famine in life gave Joseph a job. It gave him position. And it's important how we look at hard times. Many times we fight the very thing that God is using to bless us and raise us up. So the right hand of God represents his power. The left hand of God represents purpose and process. And... You cannot have power without process and purpose, or you will have disaster. The reason that Joseph was not a disaster when he rose to the ranks that he rose, and when his brothers came, and when his father came, and all his family came, is because he had gone through process of understanding. The power I have is for good. The power I have is for God. Okay, I'm going to put it this way. You want healing? Start praying for others. You want God to honor your family, honor his family. Now, now, now I'm getting personal. Okay? You want God to honor your house, honor his house. You want God to honor your business, honor his business. How many have lived long enough to see everyone, I, everything I just told you is true? His law of sowing and reaping is so true. And I praise God it's exact. And it's perfect and it's holy. And it's mighty. See, Joseph went to work for Pharaoh, a pagan, a pagan, a pagan. But he said, I'm going to honor what God has called me to do. You may not like your boss, but you need to understand something about life. And I hear this all the time. Well, they're just using me down there at the job. Anybody ever heard that? They're just using me. I'll tell you, there's one thing worse than them using you. That's them ignoring you. If you've ever been ignored off a job, you can say amen to that. Let them use you. 
it might bless you. You want God to honor your life? Joseph went to work for Pharaoh. I mean work. When Joseph honored Pharaoh, and that he honored God. Scripture says give honor to whom honors do. In fact, there's ten things the Bible tells us to honor. Honor God, honor parents, honor spouse, honor children, honor elders, honor your boss, honor church leaders, the government officials, police and military, and honor others above yourself. The Bible says there's ten things you need to honor. I don't know about you, but if I had to come into Pharaoh every day and know that he's sitting there worshiping a stinking cat, the cat would have been gone the next morning. Right. <laughs> All y'all were raised in the country like I was. It just, life was what it was. But if I see somebody worshiping a cat, I would, I, the cat may not have been there the next day. See, Jason, Jacob thinks Joseph is dead. Joseph thinks his daddy's dead. Who, what are you saying, Pastor Steve? Jacob has been told by those lion brothers that a wild animal took Joseph. And Jacob thinks Joseph is dead. Joseph doesn't even know if his father's alive. What's the first question he asked his brothers? What's the first question he asked his brothers? Oh, somebody knows what is my father. The only man that ever loved me, is he still alive? The only man, the only person that's ever loved me. My mama died when I was little. I, my, Bill of the maid probably wasn't that good of a mother. But he wants to know about his daddy. Yeah. Yeah. This is what I came to tell you today. When you go to work on someone else's dream. When you go to work on someone else's dream. There's a blessing coming your way you thought was dead. When you go to work on somebody else's dream. But when you start working on somebody else's dream. When you start working on somebody else's dream. Say it's not about me. It's not about me. When you make it about somebody else. And it's who God has identified. It's who God has identified. It's who God has identified. My goodness. There's a blessing coming your way that you thought was dead. That when Joseph said, okay, Lord, I'll work for this pagan. I'll work for him. God said, your daddy's on the way. Your daddy's on the way. Your daddy. The blessing you thought was dead is coming. So with his right hand, God is working in power, but with his left hand, he's working in process. Woo! I'm going to create a famine to restore a family. Maybe what you're going through today is about restoration. You just haven't figured it out yet. Maybe what we're going through in America today is about restoration, and the church just hasn't figured it out. We haven't figured it out. Because this is what I know. All things work together for good. To those that love God. How many love God? Okay, you two boys, I need to talk to you at church. <laughs> How many love God? I'll be at your restaurant in a minute. Okay. <laughs> so, you love God, and if you love God, and you know Him, you're called according to His purpose. God's working things out. You just may not see it. You may not perceive it. And the circumstance you're in, you need to begin to praise God for it. And in it. And understand that God is working this together for good. I come to prayer meeting. To pray for you and you and you and you. So that God is working in your dreams. So that if I pray for you and your dreams. And what God has for you. God will work in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's one of the most brilliant plans of God I've ever seen. It's called reciprocity. God is a genius. I'm going to put you to work. He's a pagan. God says I know. But it's going to bless the socks off you Joseph. It's going to bless the socks off you. It's going to bless you. 
He had the right attitude. Never cussed the vicissitudes. All he did was just give God praise. I know we're wondering, where is God right now in America? I can't sense it. I can't perceive it. All things work together for good. God is up to something. Let's start acting like it. Let's start acting like it. Let's start acting like it. Stand up if you will. Let's act like it. I know sometimes in life it's, it's hard to have a good attitude every day. I understand that. But if you get that scripture in your heart, all things are working together for good. All things are working together for good. Even though I'm losing hair right here, all things are working together for good, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That stuff called propitia. Anyway, we got to get the right attitude in America. You need the right attitude in your home, in your marriage, about your children, about your job, about your finances. Because this is what I know. These are God's words to his people. And God commanded Moses. He didn't say this is a suggestion or I got an idea. He said, Moses, you tell Aaron, I want this blessing placed on my children at the end of every service. The only prayer directly sent from heaven. The Lord bless you and keep you. Think about those words. Lord, I can't see it, I can't feel it. But the Lord's blessing me and keeping me. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance on you and give you his peace. God said, put my name on your kids. Let me, let me deal with them. Let me deal with them. God said, I'll bless you and I'll bless them. If you receive this, say amen. Amen.